What is up guys, I hope everyone is doing well. So today I am going to be bringing you my very first Ryzen PC build. So I've been trying my hardest to get a few Ryzen builds put together as you guys keep on asking for that kind of content. So I just want you to know that I'm definitely trying my best and hopefully this is the first of many Ryzen builds coming up on the channel. So for the budget, what I did was set it at $1,000 to try and get a decent build at a decent price. So let's jump in and look at the parts that I will be using. So let's start with the star of the show and that is of course the Ryzen 1700. This 8 core 16 thread chip seems to be the one that's getting all the attention at the minute with its great price to performance ratio. So let's see if I can achieve a decent overclock. I will also be utilising the included Wraith cooler as I have seen many videos now that suggest this cooler is great so I'm definitely looking forward to testing it out and see how it handles overclocking. So housing the 1700 will be the Crate Gaming X370 from MSI. While the design may be somewhat of a love or hate for some people, it will certainly get the job done. Let's take a quick look at some of its features. The X370 supports up to 64GB of DDR4 RAM clocked at 3200MHz. We have two 3.0x16 PCIe slots, allowing multiple graphics cards in either SLI or Crossfire. And if you take a closer look, you will see that they also feature MSI's steel armour to help support heavy graphics cards. And last of all, in between the PCIe slots, you will find support for an M.2 drive. For the RAM, I have 16GB of Crucial Ballistics in white, clocked at 2666MHz. I have used this RAM many times before and it has never let me down yet. For the graphics card, I will be utilising MSI's RX480 Gaming X. And I opted to go for this to keep the price of the build down, but if you're going for a system like this, feel free to go for a more powerful card if the funds are there, but the 480 from MSI is a really impressive card and will do a good job here. Moving on to the case, I will be building inside the Be Quiet Pure Base 600 Tempered Glass Edition. For the price, this case definitely worth checking out. In the top I.O. you will get your usual microphone and headphone ports, two USB 3.0, the power button, a free speed fan controller and reset switch. Speaking of fans, Be Quiet have included two of their awesome Silent Wings fans in here which are one of the quietest fans you can buy at the minute. Inside the case there is plenty of room for building and as always if you don't need to utilise the free included mechanical drive bays they can be easily removed to free up more space. In the rear there is plenty of room for cable management and we have plenty of access via rubber grommets. Overall, I am a fan of the simplicity and design here as it works really well. If you want to see a full review on this case then I will leave a link down below in the description as Dimitri from Hardware Canucks just done one the other week there and he pretty much covers everything you will need to know. So for storage I will be using a 240GB SSD from HyperX for the OS and a 1TB mechanical drive from Seagate to keep all of my games library on. Last of all, powering the system is the 500W Be Quiet Pure Power 10. This semi-modular power supply will get the job done with ease and having used power supplies from Be Quiet many times, I can tell you that they are super quiet and super reliable. So if you haven't tried one yet, then definitely consider it. Okay, so the build itself turned out to look pretty clean. As you can see, the Wraith cooler does include an RGB ring that you can customise as you wish, but the stock red colour suited the build more in this instance, but it is definitely nice to see this considering some CPUs will ship without even a cooler. So for overclocking, I managed to get the 1700 to 3.8GHz using 1.3V. This overclock ran super stable and testing in IDA64 showed the temps were not going above 72 degrees, which is pretty crazy considering we are utilising a stock cooler. At the minute overclocks on the 1700 and all Ryzen chips are a bit all over the place, but we are still waiting on motherboard manufacturers getting those BIOS updates out to make sure that we can fully optimise and utilise the chips. So I'm definitely looking forward to see what's coming up in the future. Okay, so now that everything is together, it's time to go ahead and test this build out. Please bear in mind that I am using an RX480 in this instance. And if you would like to see this exact system benchmarked with a GTX 1080, just let me know down below in the comments section and I will get straight to it. Okay, so let's get the boring generic benchmarks out of the way first of all. On Firestrike, we managed to achieve a score of 11,498 with a graphics score of 13,134. 
In Unigine Heaven, the settings used are a resolution of 1920 by 1080 quality was set to ultra, and finally, tessellation set to normal. After running the benchmark, we achieved a score of 2154, with an average FPS of 85.5. Okay, so let's see how it handles gaming. First of all, I loaded up GTA 5, again I stayed at 1080p, set the MSAA to x2, and everything else was at the highest possible settings with shadows set to softest. I played the game for around 30 minutes with no issues at all, and got an average FPS of 69. Next up, I loaded up Rise of the Tomb Raider, stuck with 1080p, enabled DX12 and used the high preset. After running the benchmark a few times, I got an average of 84.8 FPS, which is definitely a good result. Ok, so now hopping on to Metro Last Light, I went ahead and went with 1080p, very high quality with tessellation set to high, and after 3 runs of the benchmark we averaged around 87 frames per second, which again is a great result. So last of all I went ahead and loaded up my favourite game Overwatch. Obviously we stuck with the 1080p resolution and I cranked everything to the ultra preset, and as expected the game ran super smooth and I was averaging around 142 frames per second, so definitely no issues here. Ok, so that pretty much wraps up the benchmarks. For $1000 you are definitely getting some decent performance here. And as I said, if you want to see this build with a 1080 in it then just let me know and I will definitely make a video up this week. So with 8 cores this processor will also definitely be suitable for content creators. I went ahead and tried some editing in 4K and the 1700 handled it with no trouble at all. So if you want some coverage on that, also let me know down below. As always, if you have any questions or any queries, just let me know down below and I will definitely get back to you. As always, thank you so much for tuning in, stay safe, be kind to each other, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.